John Morrison was the head gamekeeper on the Brodie Castle estate in Forest Morrisher. With his wife Elizabeth, he had seven children, but our story is about just two of them, John and George. John Morrison Jr. was born on the 14th of November 1885, and George James Morrison was born eight years later on the 30th of January 1893. John followed in his father's footsteps and also became a gamekeeper on the Artonish estate at Morvan or Gailsha, and George was for a time employed in the office of Messrs Grant and Mackenzie solicitors before working as a junior clerk on the Blair Castle estate. On the outbreak of war, John enlisted in Perth signing on with the Black Watch on the 7th of September 1914. After completing three months of training, John was sent to the Western Front on the 2nd of December 1914. He joined the 1st Battalion Black Watch the following day as one of a draft of 150 men to rebuild the battalion after they had suffered huge losses during the First Battle of Ypres. Shortly before Christmas 1914, the battalion redeployed from Ypres to the then southernmost part of the line held by the British Army at Quinche to counter an anticipated advance by the enemy. On the morning of the 25th of January 1915, that counter-attack came as four enemy mines were detonated in the Brickstack sector of the front, and the line held by the Coldstream and Scots Guards was overwhelmed by a German attack. Three companies of the 1st Black Watch, along with other reinforcements, were thrown into the line in an attempt to stabilise the position, and it was during this period of fighting that John Morrison became one of 59 casualties suffered by the battalion that day. After his death, his parents received a letter from one of John's comrades describing his final moments. The attack was fierce and John got a bullet in the leg. Nevertheless, he crawled to the assistance of his officer, also wounded, and was in the act of helping him to remove his pack when he was fatally shot. He was promoted Lance Corporal only a few days before. John's brother George received a letter from the officer mentioned, 2nd Lieutenant Lewis Willett, who gave further details. Some gallant fellow crawled up to me shortly after I was hit and attempted to assist me off with my pack, but owing to the nature of my wound, I was unable to turn my neck sufficiently around to see who it was. I heard he was hit and asked him if it was so. He replied, yes sir, and when I inquired later, I received no reply, but could just touch his hand by reaching back and found he was dead. From the sound of his voice, I thought it was your brother who was in my platoon and I hoped it wasn't so and that I had made a mistake, for he was one of my most valued men. His end was a gallant one, and his was a peaceful conclusion to a career which, had he been spared to prolong it, he could have looked back on with the justifiable pride of one who has done his work well. For almost 100 years, John was commemorated among the missing on the Latouria Memorial, but on the 9th of December 2014, a local farmer working his fields discovered some remains. Among these remains were insignia and a spoon engraved with John's service number 5181. This, together with other artefacts, led the Ministry of Defence's Joint Casualty and Compassionate Centre to trace his nearest living relatives, which helped confirm his identity via DNA, and on the 27th of July 2016, with some of his relatives and current serving members of his regiment in attendance, Lance Corporal John Morrison was laid to rest at Woburn Abbey Cemetery in Kunchi. George's war story begins some four months after the death of his brother. Although we'll never know, it's possible that John's death led George to enlist in the army in May 1915, when he joined the 9th Battalion of the Royal Scots. In January 1916, before he could go to France, he received a commission, joining the 6th Battalion Seaforth Highlanders as a second lieutenant. On the 17th of July 1916, he married Anya Kate Fraser, daughter of the station master at Blair Athol, and just two months later he left for France. Three months after that, he returned home, invalided from the front suffering from trench fever, and he remained at home until May the following year. After five months on active service, he received a promotion to lieutenant, and this was followed in April 1918 by a promotion to acting captain. The month of April 1918 saw the end of George's life, as he was wounded in action near Ville-Chapelle on the 11th of April, and he died of his wounds at number 23 Casualty Clearing Station that day. A fellow officer wrote to his wife, saying, it is quite impossible to describe how very, very sorry we are at this terrible event. May you derive consolation from the fact that your husband rendered the very finest possible service to his company and his battalion. He was doing most magnificent work at the time he received his wounds from a machine gun. Although the situation was most critical, he was marvellously cool and handled his men with the greatest skill, maintaining confidence in all ranks. I never wish to meet a finer man, just a quiet, calm and thorough British soldier. Another officer wrote, I do believe you would like to know how grand and splendid was his work. We have nothing finer on all our records than George Morrison's work on the 9th and 10th April. 
I saw him just before he was wounded, and then had an opportunity of telling him how proud we were of him and his company. He achieved what was reckoned to be impossible, and saved by the highest gallantry a situation which was very grave. George's actions at that time were officially recognised, as he was posthumously awarded the Military Cross several months later, the citation reading, When the flanks of his battalion were exposed, this officer formed a defensive flank with his platoon, and although subjected to violent rifle and machine gun fire, held the line against heavy hostile attacks. This was sadly not the end of wartime tragedy for the Morrison family. George's son, John Alexander Morrison, had been born just two months before the death of his father. John joined the Royal Air Force during the Second World War, and he was navigator on board a Douglas C-47, which was flying missions to evacuate casualties from France after the Normandy landings in June 1944. On one such mission, on the 5th of August 1944, his plane crashed in foggy weather with almost zero visibility, and there were no survivors. Anya Morrison had never remarried after her husband George's death, and she died in Dunkeld in 1978. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like on this video if you found it interesting. Please let us know what you thought of this video by leaving a comment below, and subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more.